All right, well, welcome everyone to our webinar today titled Raider Sign Next Generation TC800 and 1100. Now, most people attending today are in the traffic industry, so I'm sure you're very familiar with these signs and how they work, which is great. I'm excited to be here today bringing you the latest products from Raider Sign. Uh, with the TC800 and 1100, they fill the gap that has been missing from their lineup, the 15 inch and 18 inch digital display. The other thing we will be talking about is something that people don't seem to associate very often with, with these types of signs, and that's data. People think of these devices as a safety tool, and that's about it. But there's so much valuable data being collected by them, and it's a shame that it's rarely used. And there's several reasons why that is. The biggest one we hear is that it's hard to get and it's hard to manage. That's why the cloud is such a powerful tool. It does all the work for you, all you need to do is log in and the data is just there and I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later. So thanks again for joining and let's get started. So my name is Brian Barg and I'm an Ontario account manager for Stinson ITS. I've been with the company for just over six years and today I'm happy to be bringing this webinar to you. So here's a quick overview of today's agenda. Uh, so why reducing speed matters. Raider sign effectiveness and statistics, the Raider sign models and options, connectivity and street smart software, the Raider sign cloud, and the Q&A period. So as we go along, if you do have questions, please feel free to enter them into the questions tab in the sidebar of the webinar window. And we will also be doing a quiz where someone will win some cool prizes. And again, to answer, put, your, uh, put yours in the questions window as well. So this is an interesting piece of history. This is an image of the world's first police radar unit in 1947 in the state of Connecticut. The top right image is the radar transceiver and the meter below is an analog reader, which you had to keep watching to see the highest speed recorded. I find it interesting to think that there was a need for speed enforcement even back then. I'm also wondering how that held up in court if <laughs> the meter moved I mean, how did you go into a courtroom and say the person was doing the speed, but maybe they didn't think of it back then. So why does speed matter? Well, here's a sobering fact. Reducing speed by just a few kilometers per hour greatly increases a person's chance of living if they are struck by a vehicle. As speed increases, so do fatalities. For example, take a road that has a 50, uh, speed limit of 50 kilometers per hour. If a pedestrian is struck, by a car at that speed, they have an 85% chance of dying or having a life-altering serious injury. Now on average, drivers make eight journeys on familiar routes each week. And while traveling on these familiar routes, 46% of the drivers say they are most likely to have no recollection of how they got to their destination. So converting a driver's brain activity from an autopilot state to an engaged state requires a trigger and strategically placed radar speed, uh, radar speed feedback signs can serve as triggers. In a more recent study funded by the Pima Department of Transportation, it had the same conclusion on the effectiveness of radar speed feedback signs. But the study also showed the benefit in dollar value per year associated with the reduction in severe crashes. The money saved could be used for other traffic products. So if you're interested in resources to these studies, Feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to supply them to you. So Raider Sign now has four models to choose from. The TC400, the TC600, the TC800, and the TC1100. Now a quick note, the numbers behind or after the TC represent how many feet away you can be from the sign and still see the digital numbers clearly. So the TC400 is Radar Science portable unit and has a modular design with a front radar speed, uh, sorry, with a front radar speed sign housing and a rear battery housing that detach from each other. So the sign can easily be moved and used in different locations. It includes a universal bracket that can be installed on any size style of pole in just a couple of minutes, making it a valuable investment. This sign is ideal for traffic speeds up to 85 kilometers an hour. It can also be mounted on a truck hitch or the mobile patrol stand, which you'll see in an upcoming slide. 
For those wanting to permanently mount this unit, they offer an AC version, which is an ideal solution for parking decks as well as an interior, uh, sorry, interior warehouse locations. The TC6 is a full matrix radar speed sign with multiple display options and is available in AC power and solar powered models. It's, uh, it is ideal for traffic speeds up to 115 kilometers an hour. The standard alerts to slow down and too fast come with the sign. However, optional alerts and strobes can be added for a small charge. Uh, the sign on the bottom has the hyper alert faceplate and we'll discuss that in an upcoming slide as well. Now to the TC-800 and the 1100. Like the TC-600, they are also full matrix radar speed signs with multiple display options, offering the same standard and optional alerts. However, the TC-800 is has 15 inch tall numbers and the TC-1100 has 18 inch tall numbers, making it visible from 1100 feet away while the driver is traveling at highway speeds. The design behind the TC-800 and 1100 signs is well thought out. The physical size of both units are the same. However, the TC-1100 uses different LED panels with two additional rows. And by doing this, the LEDs are spaced apart to creating, uh, creating the three inch height difference. The Your Speed faceplate that bolts onto the front of the sign is the only thing that's physically larger. So by building one body uh, to make both signs is beneficial in several ways. And one key benefit to the customer is that there isn't a huge price variable between the two signs. Now, a big difference the new TC800 and the 1100 have is, the two, that, is that the two AGM batteries are now externally mounted, meaning the actual body of the sign is thinner and lighter. And this makes installation much easier. The batteries are stored in their own aluminum housing, which can be accessed by removing four screws if they ever need to be replaced. And mounting the, back of the ba uh, mounting the battery to the back of the sign is easily done by placing the bottom of the pack in a small fitted channel and using the provided Torx screwdriver, you tighten the bolt and that's it. There aren't any external wires to plug in. The connection is made from the male and female connectors built into the back of the sign and the battery pack. As well, the black disc that you see is the antenna for the uh, external cell modem, which all TC-800 and 1100 units have, comes, or they come standard with, in case the customer wishes to activate and use the cloud data reporting feature. So for those thinking about stall, installing a unit uh, in a school zone, Raider Sign has you covered. The system on the left includes flashing beacons that can be vertically or horizontally mounted and the signage can be customized to your provincial regulations. The system on the right uses the hyper alerts, which are compact clusters of LED lights built in right into the Your Speed faceplate of the TC600 model, delivering a significantly more compact solution than traditional beacons at a lower cost. The TC400 radar speed sign mounted on a patrol uh, on a mobile patrol stand is ideal for locations where traffic calming is needed on a temporary rotating basis. And the radar speed trailer hitch provides a traffic calming solution where you need it when you need it. The radar on the go, sorry, the radar on the go hitch is purpose built for the TC400 and is ideal in areas like construction zones. So here's a poll question that I have for people that are attending and that own driver feedback signs. So the question is, what is the biggest issue you've had with your sign? Is it A, vandalism, B, poor quality build of the sign, C, dead batteries or solar panels that wouldn't keep batteries charged, or D, connecting to the unit or reporting software. So if you look on the side panel, you'll see this thing that says pull open. And if you wanna just enter in your answers there, that would be great. And we'll just give you a second to, to do that. Oh, 
it looks like people are still answering, so we'll just give it a minute. And Sam, you can uh, let us know what the number one issue is. Okay, so 50% uh, of the answers said dead batteries or solar panels that wouldn't keep the batteries charged. Um, however, the other three answers did still get picked. Okay. Well, that's interesting and it's good information for us to know. Okay, well, with Raider Sign, you're not required to choose between setting the unit up for high visibility versus the battery life, which is a choice that some other manufacturers. Uh, remember, a driver can't react to what they don't see. Uh, some signs are made of plastic now, which makes them prone to vandalism. This is a picture um, that shows 40 caliber bullets being fired at point blank range uh, that didn't de penetrate the bash plate, which is a quarter inch thick aluminum sheet that has cones drilled uh, for every LED and sits in front of the LED panel. And Raider Sign is Wi-Fi enabled, which is better than Bluetooth technology in a few ways. It's faster, it has a better range, it can do over the air updates, and to connect to it locally uh, with the sign, you simply access this local web page to program the sign and collect data. And Raider Sign units also come with a possum switch, which makes the sign appear as if it's dead for 30 minutes if it's been hit. So I'm gonna take a second away from the presentation just to show you this, because I'm sure a few of you smiled when I showed you the picture of the Raider Sign stopping bullets. I know I did or chuckled when the first time I was told that or shown that. Um, and I'm thinking, okay, well, that's understandable. Like Raider Sign is built in Georgia and down there people like to shoot things. But sadly, this is a reality that affects, uh, affects us up here as well. So this is a news article from March of this year in the city of Ottawa where a driver feedback sign was shot and destroyed by somebody shooting it, obviously. So uh, vandalism is a very real problem with these types of signs and kind of always has been. So moving on to StreetSmart, which is Raider Science traffic data reporting software. And this allows you to report, organize, and analyze the traffic data collected from your Raider speed signs. StreetSmart can generate 35 charts and graphs with just a few mouse clicks. One of the benefits um, is the ability to run in stealth mode. Uh, this is where the sign appears to be turned off, but still collects data. If you let it run for a period of time and then turn the display back on, you can see for yourself how the speeds were reduced. And this is a great tool uh, to justify spending and show its effectiveness. It can also be used to show local residents that speeding on their streets is not nearly as bad as they believe, or actually that it was worse. So the Raider Sign Cloud is a secure remote management system utilizing cellular modems. It provides the central management of the devices within your network anytime, anywhere, including sign operation settings, alerts, data access, and data collection from any internet connected device. Here's an image of Raider Sign Cloud. And as you can see on this screen alone, you're provided with a lot of information the GPS location of the sign, the total vehicles and total speeders for the past 30 days, the battery voltage and solar charging history over the past 30 days, that's right here, and the connection to the cloud per day over the past 30 days. So the sign reaches out to the cloud and does kind of a handshake every 15 minutes. Now here's another screenshot showing how user-friendly the cloud portal is. When you click on any device from the map, you will see the last week's worth of speed data. The gray bar is the daily vehicle volume and the red bar is the volume of vehicle speeding. The top blue box jumps directly to, the all, uh, to all the charts, graphs, tables for the speed data. And the bottom blue box jumps directly to the scheduler where you can program the signs individually or in a group. So let's take a deeper dive into what that that's 
So after clicking the top blue box, you are taken to a statistics chart screen where you can select any date range, which is right here, as well as the time of day range, which is right here. And it's a sliding scale, so you can slide these into whatever date, uh, time of range you want. The graphs available to you under the time period tab are vehicles and violators, speeders versus non-speeders, the percentage of speeders, and the average and peak speeds. <clears throat> and after running the report, you are able to save it as a PDF. Now, if you click the speed bin at the top right, which is here, you get the speed bin charts. And again, you can select any date range. And the graphs that are available are average uh, versus peak vehicles by percentage, average and peak vehicle counts, average speeds versus 85th percentile, and the daily speed summary counts and percentages. And like the above slide, after running the report, you can save it as a PDF. Now the bottom box on the previous slide takes you to the configurations tab, which is right here. So this is kind of what the chart looks like when you're in the Raider Side Cloud, so you can toggle between these as well. Here you, you will be able to create sign groups. This allows you to group together all the signs, if you have multiple signs that are deployed on roadways with the same speed limit, or say the same speed limit if you're in a school zone with say a flashing 40. So in this case here, you're seeing all the TC 600 signs in a 50 kilometer an hour zone. So these are all the signs here in that group. So clicking on the configuration tab, which is a overview that we were just looking at, you can see how the Raider sign units are programmed. As well, you can enter into the edit mode, which is over here, uh, if you wanna make any changes. So here you can see clearly all the settings for this group of signs that are in a 50 kilometer an hour road. So you can program the minimum and maximum speeds over here. So, and this is also where you would turn on the display. So in this case, the minimum speed that the sign is going to display is at 15 kilometers an hour, and then the maximum speed is 80. And you also have uh, over maximum behavior, so you can either choose after 80 kilometers an hour for there to be dashes, which is the middle of the eights, or you can choose to have the screen go blank. You can also program the standard alerts here. So in this case, this case here, uh, the alert number one is triggered at 51 kilometers an hour. <clears throat> so what happens at that time is as opposed to when the numbers are being displayed steadily, it will start to flash slow and the number, uh, sorry, it's gonna to toggle between the vehicle speed and the message slow down, and they'll just keep alternating back and forth until the vehicle either slows down under 50, or say it speeds up and goes over 60. So once 60 kilometers an hour is hit, the sign will start to flash fast, and you will then see the vehicle speed and then the message too fast, and they will flash. So there's a lot of different customizing that you do if you just want to have it flash too fast and not the vehicle speed you can choose that and there's also a number of different flash patterns so also if the strobe was a uh, feature was purchased enabling it and scheduling it would be done in the configuration tab as well all right so we are going to do a quick quiz so if you want to go to the uh, questions tab you can put in your answer there so again this uh, Again, so yeah, go into the questions tab, put your answer there. First person that enters uh, the correct answer is winning some cool Cincinnati guest swag. And Sam will reach out to you after the webinar to get your shipping information. All right, so here is the question. What Raider sign model is suitable for readability from 600 feet? Is it A, the TC400, B, the TC600, C, the TC-800 or D, the TC-1100. So again, that's what Raider sign model is suitable, uh, readable from 600 feet. Is it the TC-400, the TC-600, the TC-800 or the TC-1100? So I'll wait for Sam to reveal who the winner is. We do have um, quite a few of the right answers already. They're actually, in fact, all the right answers. So congratulations, everyone is a winner. 
Um, People. <laughs> but no, uh, the winner of the prize, however, is um, Michael. Um, and I will contact you afterwards to get your shipping address. Oh, that's great. People are listening, and that's uh, so. Yes, everybody's the winner, and congratulations, Michael. All right. So, often public safety committees or charitable nonprofits concerned with road safety issues and protecting vulnerable road users operate with little or no budget for purchasing new products. So, we'd like to give these organizations a chance to try out a radar feedback sign from Radar Sign, which has proven to reduce speeding and increase safety. So Stinson ITS would like to continue our trial program where we will send these types of Canadian organizations a solar powered radar sign to test out for 90 to 100 days. Uh, this is a no pressure, no commitment, no cost trial where we hope some of these, or these organizations will be able to experience the benefits of one of these systems that might otherwise not have, have access to. So something a little bit different, we are also going to open up this uh, pilot or whatever you want to call it, to smaller towns or counties or municipalities with little or no operating budget as well, but also want to see the benefits of what this product can do. So if someone you know would be a good fit or yourself, please definitely reach out to us and we can set that up for you. So our next webinar is a Francophone webinar, and it's a first for Stinson ITS and Myovision. It takes place on Wednesday, November the 2nd at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, this webinar aims to introduce you to the new MyVision equipment and software solutions. So Michelle, Mike Mondor, our Technical Account Manager in Quebec and Eastern Canada, will be accompanied by Mr. David Paradis, Director of Corporate Sales, and Olivia Babcock, Traffic Engineer, both from MyVision. And together they will introduce what's new at MyVision during a 45 minute French uh, spoken presentation, which there will be uh, followed by a Q&A period, which is a perfect segue to my next slide, which is questions. So if you have asked questions, Sam will start reading them out, but if you also have any additional questions, again, please write them in the questions tab and I will do my best to answer them. Someone did ask a question. Um, someone asked, would users have access to raw data? Um, so yes, uh, there is a, a way to um, report the raw data. So if you're using a, another product like test or something like that and want to incorporate it in there, you can. Um, so yeah, the short answer is yes. Uh, is the cloud pricing based on per unit or a flat rate for all units? So the cloud, um, it is uh, price based on per unit. Um, and the other thing I did want to mention is with the TC 800 and the TC 1100, there is three months of free cloud service that is available for you. The way Raider Sign works is that if you do want to unlock the reporting feature, um, there is a one-time fee of $395, and that unlocks that, whether you're using the cloud or the StreetSmart um, option. <clears throat> and say you have a TC800 where you have, um, where it has the built-in cloud. If you have purchased the StreetSmart, uh, that unlocking feature, uh, you can then use the cloud for free for three, uh, three months. Um, after that, it's a yearly fee of $520 per year, uh, and there's definitely discounts for multiple uh, multiple units. Uh, can your signs with solar packages operate throughout the winter? Definitely. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, these are uh, manufactured in Georgia, but we solar size them here to accommodate Canada. Um, so right now it's a, the, the signs are a, use an 85 watt panel. Um, and I mean, the first sign that we ever did was actually on a trailer when I first started six years ago. And it's kind of part of our kind of trial, but mobile fleet of rentals and it's still working strong. The sign I think is the furthest out is kind of in the Eastern part of Newfoundland and it's been there for five years and there's really no issues. You can actually disconnect the batteries and run the, the, the system right off of the solar panel. Um, 
So it's a very low energy system, um, but you definitely want to obviously run it with batteries. Someone asked, is the cloud software compatible with other manufacturers signs that also have cloud-based reporting software? No, that would be something that's proprietary that every manufacturer has their own kind of version. So the cloud software that Raider Sign offers is proprietary to their, their signs. Can you customize the display with images like a smiley face? Absolutely. So if I just I'm going to quickly click back to my slides here to the very beginning. I don't know how to do this other than just keep on hitting the mouse. Um, you'll see at the very beginning there is smiley face here. So the standard alerts, like I said, uh, are the, the speed, the slowdown, and the too fast. Uh, but there are, um, actually there's another, sorry about this, but I'll just go to the TC600 uh, right here. So these are the standard alerts that you get, which is the numbers and the slowdown too fast. And then the optional alerts that are already pre-built in that it's $50 per alert uh, that you would pay to get it ordered is the left chevron, a sharp curve, the right chevron, and then a fine of whatever you want to put in there. And then there's the strobe, uh, the red strobe, the blue strobe, and the white strobe. I'm not 100% sure how legal these are, but um, that's up to you and your municipality to decide. And then also school zone, and then there's the happy face. So if you came up with something else that you wanted to uh, have put in there, you can custom order that as well. Uh, someone asked for the prices of each sign. Um, so, so yes, so the TC, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, so we don't usually do pricing on webinars because they stay online um, forever and pricing will change, but we can definitely send you a price sheet afterwards. Yeah, That's basically what I was going to say. <laughs> If there's anyone else that wants prices, um, just put it in the questions window and we'll follow up with you afterwards. Yes, definitely. And the other thing too with their pricing is that as soon as you buy two, there is a price discount per unit and they get quite aggressive uh, the more you buy. And then that looks like the end of the questions. Okay. Well, if there aren't any more questions, then I will leave it at that with this slide here. Um, so I will give you back 15 minutes of your day. And I want to thank everybody for taking the time out of their busy day to join us uh, with this webinar. So on that note, I will let Sam end it. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.